you need to have those trades ready to go. You can't be thinking about those trades on election day or the day after. You need to be ready to hit that button because you're not gonna have a week. You might not even have an hour. You might have 30 seconds or 10 seconds to get your Trump trade on. Both national polls and betting odds are showing that Joe Biden is in the lead for the 2020 election, which is now just 33 days away. Many people have already voted. Many people who have not voted are not gonna have their minds changed, regardless of what kind of shit show the next debates end up being. Now let's get this show on the road and off the rails. But our job as investors is being prepared for either outcome. We've had a couple of videos about what stocks would be buying and selling ahead of a Biden presidency. Today, we explore the other side. Is it as simple as do the opposite of the Biden trades? No, it's not. <laughs> Excuse me. Just bet against infrastructure and electric vehicles and sustainable energy and go all in on oil and golf courses and Twitter? What happens to stocks if Trump wins? We're gonna reveal our best stock picks for a second term with Donald Trump. This is one of those episodes where despite the political nature, we we have our minds open. We have to have a plan for our money. I know exactly what my Trump trade is. Is it healthcare? Is it drugs? Is it banks? What what are uh, your what are your Trump trades? Because I have one okay. that you, you probably haven't uh, picked up on. All right, I bet you do, but I have a bunch, okay? I have a bunch, but let's just talk about my, like, my nut. What is the first button I'm hitting? If you want to know what the first ticker is that I'm going to type in <laughs> to my Ameritrade account, it is going to be shorting or buying puts on T-A-N, TAN. That is the um, solar ETF, okay? Now, you look at the solar ETF, this thing has been up the last few days. Why is it up? Because Biden kind of won, according to betting polls. But he's lying. I can't point out if he says a lie. And the market kind of won this last last debate, generally, like by a little bit. And that's a positive for 10. Although I did Listen. see the uh, president tweeted that he won just this morning, just just 30 minutes ago because he, what, what, <laughs> he won. Money, money doesn't lie. And listen, the bottom line is the Biden stocks have been performing better than average the last couple of days. And TAN, T-A-N is a stock. And I told you this, if Biden wins the election, I'm going down, I'm, I'm levering into that, okay? And some of the components of that that we talked about on our Biden episode, if you guys haven't seen our what stocks to buy if Biden wins, we did two episodes on that. You must watch them. Maybe we'll put them up here. We'll put them in the in the notes in the description. But I'm going to short tan. I'm going to buy puts on tan because it's such an obvious trade. I don't think you try to get too fancy. I think you could try to get fancy with your seventh or eighth trade. But I think the first five or six that you make have to be obvious ones because that's where the market is going to be rushing into those trades. I'm going to be shorting tan. That's my first one. Yeah, my I'll, I'll probably buy. Um probably buy some oil, I'll buy some Exxon Mobil. Because, yeah, because I think that's gonna be my first one. I, I just, I, you know, I just think that, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of, of uh, negative overhang right now. And that's the reason, you know, and oil demand and things like that, um, that's hanging over a lot of these oil stocks. Um, and I think it'll be a big boost if uh, Trump does get reelected. That, so. That's a really smart trade. You know why? Because it's an obvious trade. And I think for right. your first, second, third trade, don't get too fancy. You know how many funds are going to be rushing into that oil trade. Jordan, that is a brilliant first trade right there. And it's, that's so right, and it's so depressed right now. And it's so depressed right now, too. It absolutely Agreed. is. And I have I have one that I, I'm going to, it's not going to be the first one that I mentioned, but it is going to be, uh, I think it's the one that, that is kind of most interesting. But I discovered something yesterday when we were telling uh, some friends of ours at uh, Bullish, they, they told me about this ETF that I didn't know existed. It's the MAGA ETF. And... It is, it is this, uh, it's an ETF that, here's their methodology from their website. They, uh, they, it is 150 companies from the S&P 500 that is indexed based on this Trump index that they've created based on the company employees and political action committees being highly supportive of Republican candidates. So it's like this equally, equally weighted ETF. So there's more exposure to smaller companies, uh, less weight on tech companies, but it's companies like L Brands, Domino's Pizza, 
FedEx, UPS, Whirlpool, Duke Energy. It's it is uh, so it's it's this little company. I don't know how big they are, but Point Bridge Capital is the company that put it together. And I look their their founder. Uh, his name is Hal Lambert. He served in Trump's inaugural committee. And uh, from what I can tell, they're, this is their only publicly traded ETF, and they're otherwise just a fee-based money management firm for rich people, the kind of firm that the three of us avoid like the plague. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a trade I might make for one day. Because I do the mere fact that it's called the magnifying. That's, that's what I'm thinking. Whether it's right, yes. whether it's I'm going to write. It's that, one of those. It's one of those ticker down. first kind of trades where it, you know, like like you say, the obvious trades, the you know, going to Exxon Mobil on day one, going to MAGA seems like th that's that's kind of might be a news story uh, on election morning. Can I tell you what my fourth trade is? I know I only told you one. Please do. But Jordan's Jordan's is my second. And yours is my third. So, like, I'm, I'm liking where <laughs> all of you are going with this. So my fourth is going to be something slightly more speculative, okay. slightly, but I think you could really potentially kill it on this trade, okay? I am going to buy for one single day, I'm going to go in on Kodak, okay? I'm going to go in on Kodak <laughs> if I think... Trump is going to win. I'm going to own them for one day. Are you going to buy okay? some Nikola too while you're at it? <laughs> no, no, no. This is a Kodak. Because you remember the whole Kodak trade? I know. It's all about this is Trump's people that are pushing for this. And I don't even care if the deal gets done or not. But I think when people see Trump potentially winning, if that happens, or if he actually does win, I think there's going to be a huge rush into that Kodak trade. Okay? So I'm buying Kodak. I'm going to sell it after 24 or 48 hours max. But that will be my fourth trade, okay? All right. I like it. <laughs> Mar mark it not, off here. Not too much. <laughs> I want to know, Chris, what are you, you going to do with your Vista outdoors if, you, if, uh, if this happens? Now you're starting to get a little more fancy, okay? Yeah. Not too fancy. I'm going to say that Vista is not my fifth trade. It's my sixth. It's my fifth trade is I'm going to buy some banks, all right? And why am I going to buy the banks? Not because I like the no, banks. No, because of, because because of favorable tax it, treatment. Dave, you just nailed it. Yeah. You nailed it. So if you want to play the corporate tax rate, the most obvious rate to, way to do that on a Trump win would be to buy B of A and JP Morgan and some of the other big banks, right? So yep. that's an obvious one, guys, right? Got to do that. Want to talk a little about the media companies, okay? Because I think that Trump has has basically kept cable television alive. My pick for the media company is the failing New York Times. Trump loves to hate them, but the reality is New York Times, NYT, has dramatically outperformed the S&P 500 since Trump was inaugurated. It is up 300% since Election Day. It's out of control. Correlation doesn't necessarily mean causation. That's right? true. We talk about that all the time. So I don't know, unless you can prove to me that it's up because of Trump, I don't see that as being an obvious Trump trade. I think it's an interesting one I think to it's, research further. Yeah, I think it's not but, specifically up because of Trump. I think that the idea of investing in a paper-based, we're going to deliver thing, that seems like something I would stay far, far away from, well, they're but they have but switched the time, to digital. The Times is not just paper-based. Absolutely. I mean, they've got an excellent website. That's the thing. Here's a five-year chart, New York Times, and let me just overlay the S&P 500 so you can see that I, I actually am telling the truth. Look at that. New York Times yeah. in green, the S&P 500 in orange. Wow. I would not have thought that. I, I, I wouldn't have either until I started looking into, like, I really, I wanted to find, like, Fox News was doing well or that, like, one of these super Trumpy kind of media outlets was. But but they weren't. They, they actually didn't do well. I feel like I want to go back on my number one, two, and three <laughs> trade, um, something that Jordan, Jordan mentioned. Because Jordan did mention, what do I think about Vista Outdoors if Trump wins? And, and this is a really important question. It's not just Vista Outdoors. It's also Smith & Wesson. It's also Ruger. This is the gun and ammo trade. We have been on this gun and ammo trade all year, and we have been crushing it, right? And as you guys know, I've been piling into Vista Outdoors. In fact, I now have 100,000 shares of Vista Outdoors, guys. Wow. 100,000. 
thousand what? shares. It's a twenty dollars stock, so okay, that's that's impressive. If I start to see a Trump edge, okay, and oh, if Trump actually ends up, it looks like he's going to win. I am not only going to completely pull back from that Vista Outdoors trade. I will sell my hundred thousand shares, and I will short it. Okay, I will short Vista. I will sell my Smith and Wesson, and I will short Smith and Wesson. I will sell my Ruger, and I will short Ruger. Because the one thing that we know for a fact is that a Trump win is terrible, terrible for gun stocks and ammo stocks. Now, I will say there is one exception to that rule: if a Trump win ends up leading to kind of mass civil chaos, then I might get back into gun stocks. But I think the initial knee-jerk reaction, the knee-jerk reaction of, oh, wow, Trump's going to win today, is a huge negative for gun and ammo, man. And that could be a top three trade for me, quite honestly. I have kind of a crazy one, guys. I don't know. Well, I don't know. Do you have any, do you have any others that are really like- Those are, maybe those are the off, top of, a little more off that's radar? top of my list. Jordan, how about you? I was trying to think about what would be a good infrastructure play, right? Because I think that's, um, and I actually think that that's kind of uh, on a Trump win. My kind of infrastructure a, play. I think it's more both, Biden, right? I think it's yeah. both. Yeah. Yeah, it's both. both. I think it's probably a little bigger on Biden. Oh, You're so, probably right. So let me throw out one pure play for the election. GEO, GEO Group, uh, is a big private prison company publicly traded. They have been in the dumps. I, but part of the reason why I think they're in the dumps right now is this risk of Biden winning the election and really messing with their contracts long term. So if Trump wins, I think that's an immediate pop for GEO group. That's interesting. Yeah, that's that's the one that I think? hadn't uh, put on my list, but um, it's it's now on. This, this is my official list now. So I want to say something here. It's less it's less about exactly which trade you pick. So as an investor, I don't think I'm going to spend too much of my time trying to decipher is, you know, is the Exxon trade better than the Lockheed trade? Or is that better than, you know, uh, shorting TAN, right? Which is the solar ETF. All these trades are probably legitimate good Trump trades yeah. if it looks like he's going to win. I think it's more important for investors to spend their energy and their focus on when to put the trade on. Getting that trade on early, but not too early. Actually making sure that the that it really is going in Trump's favor, right, before you put that trade on. Because if you get caught in that trade and you're on the wrong side of it, and then Trump loses or it's a contested election, all of a sudden, these stocks are going to, you know, snap right back. Now I've got one more thing to think about: Amazon. Yeah. So we know that uh, we know that Trump's been, you know, somewhat anti-Amazon. Um, He's just been anti. You think this is a? That's a good point. He's a hater. Yeah, that's a good point. But they, I mean, they're they all, you know, there's always stuff coming up about, you know, uh, the government looking into all sorts of things with Amazon. So do you think that stuff ramps up or do you I, think it's a non-issue? I, I don't. With all the various obvious Trump trades, I don't on election day. I don't see a ton of people like trading Amazon because Biden won or Trump won. Yeah. But you know why, Jordan? Because you could make a good argument on both sides that it's either yeah. good or bad. And and so even within the good, clear. like I, I, there's good things about, I think Amazon's still a strong company if Trump wins, right? It's not all yeah. negative. And, yeah. and I think that a lame duck president isn't as motivated to like perhaps try to torture his rival, uh, Jeff Bezos. My one big takeaway is don't overthink Trump trades overthink whether or not to put those trades on and when to put them on. And, and for me, it's not, it's not, I'm not going to be concentrated in just one trade. I'm going to have like a handful, maybe not all 10 that you have, but I'm going to have a few because some will do better than others. Obviously some will do worse and having, you know, basically I'm going to have my own little mutual fund of, uh, of trades that I'm going to place based on various scenarios. Yeah. And, and listen, by the way, it doesn't matter whether you're, you know, a Trumper, a conservative, a Republican, a Democrat, a Biden fan, this is money. Political views don't matter on this show. You have to be apolitical and you have to really dissect, is this going in Biden's direction? Is it going in Trump's direction? It's so hard. How hard is it to remove your political self? Less hard for us because we're pretty apolitical, right? Um, but I think it's really important to remove that political bias. And if it starts to move one way or the other, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to I'm going to start to edge my positions in. I'm going to 
these Trump positions are not all or nothing. I'm not going to wait till Election Day. I'm going to start to edge into these positions if I think Trump right, is doing better and better towards the election. All right. So, guys, it's 70 and sunny here. In you Montauk, definitely need to get out to the beach. I, I want to hit the beach. For sure. I want to hit the beach. It's right across the street. Before you go and before anyone goes, make sure you have hit that like button. Subscribe here. Ring the bell. Uh, you can listen to our podcast. We're on Apple. We're on Spotify. Uh, follow us on Twitter, on Instagram, on TikTok, on Twitch. Dumb Money TV is our handle on all of those. You can join our Discord server. I saw Leon posted the link to that down in the comments. It's dumbmoney.tv slash Discord. Uh, keep the conversation going on Discord in our comments here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Dave Hansen. For Chris and Jordan, we are Dumb Money. We will see you on Monday.